Most people who have an interest in Wicca come to it first from an interest in magic. Therefore, we will begin these lessons by talking about magic. Many people would say that magic is only a small part of the Wiccan religion, and in the sense of spellcraft, this is true. But in a broader sense, everything about Wicca is magic, because Wicca is about transformation, creation, and spiritual growth. And this, after all, is what magic is all about. But what is magic? And how does it work? The universe is composed of energy. Everything around you, everything you see and many things you do not, are composed of energy. You too are composed of energy. Your body, which seems so solid, is composed of endless numbers of microscopic particles held together at the subatomic level by energy. Science has taught us this. But the Vedic sages of India taught this too, for many thousands of years. In Europe, the Druids, and after them the witches, recognized this fact as well. Even the most solid stone is in fact composed of millions and billions of atoms and molecules orbiting each other in the endless and graceful dance of life. This is part of the meaning of that ancient maxim, as above, so below. That just as we live in a vast universe filled with countless stars, so too whole universes of a different nature exist within us, within the microscopic makeup of our being, worlds within worlds. The electromagnetic energy which holds electrons and protons and other microscopic particles in place has had many names. Ki in Asia, Mana in Polynesia, Orenda to the Iroquois, Od in Germany, the Force in Star Wars, and psychic energy in contemporary society. For the purposes of these lessons, we will call it simply energy. Energy is not static or inanimate. It is responsive and dynamic in character. It is like a fluid in its movements and is symbolically likened to water. Yet it is also likened to light and to fire because of its effects. In more contemporary times, it has also been likened to an electric current and its qualities, though it is not so harsh or unpredictable as this. In truth, energy is unique unto itself and only by working with it can you come to understand it. Comparisons to other substances give only a rough approximation of what it is like. It is the shape this energy assumes that creates the pattern of the physical world we see around us, for all physical forms are structured from it. We interact with this energy every day, in every second of our lives. It constantly transforms, renews, or changes its shape within and around us. This constant change responds to and is driven by our thoughts and emotions in ways of which most of us are unaware and of which fewer still have any understanding. It takes its shape from us, in reaction to us, as instantly and naturally as air conforms to the surface of the earth or water to the shape of the seafloor. But this is an unconscious process. We don't think about it. We're mostly unaware of it. For most of us, this daily shaping of energy occurs from the level of our unconscious beliefs and emotions, as automatic and out of our control as our unconscious is itself. Often we do not even know what our unconscious beliefs and emotions really are, let alone how they affect us on an energetic level. But when we bring our conscious mind and willpower to bear on this process, it is a very different situation. Rather than an unconscious process out of our own control, the shaping of energy, and thus of the world itself, becomes a precise and deliberate skill which lies directly in our hands. This is magic, the art of consciously focusing and controlling this all-pervasive energy. Through focused will and effort, we use the universal energy to affect the things around us. As energy reacts to thought and emotion, thought and emotion can be used to control or influence it. Energy also reacts to certain physical stimuli, but we will deal less with that aspect than with thought and emotion. Yoga is an excellent form to study the influence of physical stimuli upon energy. It must be understood that it is not from the ordinary level of our conscious mind that we do this. If it were, everyone would be doing it and it would be easy to teach. Rather, magic is done from a higher level of consciousness, the higher self. Scientists studying psychics have found that when a person enters a psychic trance, their brain waves change. Psychics in trance do not use the normal beta waves associated with ordinary consciousness, but use instead the theta and delta waves associated with sleep. 
This is true of a person performing an act of magic as well. We access a higher part of ourselves, a change in consciousness which shows, even in our very brain waves. Only at this level are we fully conscious, truly human. It is not hard to reach this level, but it is hard to learn to do it at will, to be able to access it on command. This is called shifting consciousness, and an accomplished witch can do it in the twinkling of an eye with no external effort or trappings. The student, however, should expect to put out some effort to affect this change in consciousness and may have to work hard to master it. Also, a number of external factors may be used to help affect this change. Specific words, ritual patterns, or items such as stones or artifacts which have power in themselves or which serve to put the person in the right frame of mind, for example. Such external trappings are keys which we use to help affect the shift in consciousness to access our higher self. They work on a symbolic level, bypassing conscious and unconscious limitations to act directly upon the higher self. There are many different ways by which magic can be performed. All of them have the same basic goal, to focus energy and direct it from a state of higher consciousness. Visualization, trance, spellcraft, using external tools such as candles, cords, etc. Ritual of various sorts, chanting and toning, all of these and many other techniques can be used to create the necessary shift in consciousness. Which is the best way? That depends very much upon the individual. What serves one person best may not work at all for another. Everyone is different. That's why it's important to study and try as many different techniques as possible. Because only you can know what will work best for you, and then only by experience. In these lessons, we will present as much useful instruction as possible, and as wide a variety of techniques as possible. But in the end, your growth depends upon your willingness to experiment and put together those techniques which serve you best. Through magic, we influence or control the things around us. Therefore, it is wise to use magic only to make these things better. The ancient rule of Wicca is, do as you will, but harm none. Magic is a great power and can be a great responsibility. We do well to use it wisely. Everything you do comes back to you through karma. Every action you take, you will eventually experience from the receiving end. Thus, when you do good for another, you are ultimately doing good for yourself. For in time, you will experience that good as a recipient. And when you do harm to another, you are ultimately harming yourself. This is very important to understand and remember. You should bear it in mind in every aspect of your life, including the magic you practice. To do harm is not only wrong in and of itself, but also harms the doer. Moreover, most Wiccans believe in the Law of Three. That is to say that what you do comes back to you not only once, but multiple times. Some Wiccans believe that the number three in the threefold law is meant to be taken literally, that the karma of our actions returns to us exactly three times. In the Karelian tradition, we consider the number three to be symbolic of plurality in general, rather than a specific number of times. Thus, in Karelian terms, the law of three means that you will experience the karma of your actions as many times as necessary to learn the necessary lesson. Always ask yourself, how would I feel if I were on the receiving end, before you do anything that affects another? Because in fact you will in time receive it back, for all things return to their source. But so long as you work with a pure heart and good intent, karma will be your benefactor. Magic and psychism are words that describe two aspects of the same process, connecting to the higher self. The word psychic comes from the Greek psyche, meaning soul or spirit, it asks the higher self. In magic, we use this connection actively to create a certain response in the world. In psychism, we use the same connection passively to receive information about the world. We also use the word psychic to describe the exercises we use to develop both these skills. Magic is worked from the higher self. Everything that helps you to connect with your higher self helps magic. Regular meditation and psychic exercises are a valuable tool to strengthen that connection. The connection is like a muscle and grows stronger with use. The more you do, even if at first you do not see success, the better you will get and the easier it will be. 
Persistence is important. One of the most important aspects of magical working, which is equally important in every magical act you ever perform, is psychic hygiene. Psychic hygiene prevents energy from becoming blocked in your body, which can make it difficult to use energy properly. Every time you do a magical work, you raise energy. That is, you focus and direct energy. When you have finished, you will still have excess energy left in your body, which must be released. You might think that retaining this excess energy would be good, but it is not. It clogs up and causes problems. Too much of this excess energy can cause serious problems. So always practice good psychic hygiene. You can sometimes tell if you have excess energy after a ritual or magical working if you find yourself feeling lightheaded or off balance or disoriented. Sometimes also it will manifest as a feeling of hyperactivity, an inability to be still, literally a feeling of excess energy. But even if you feel nothing unusual, you may still have excess energy and should make it a point to clear and release as a matter of course. Another word for clearing and releasing excess energy is grounding. You will find complete instructions for releasing in the exercises section of this lesson. Psychic hygiene is always important when you do magic or psychic work. You should cleanse and release both before you begin and especially after you finish. But this is not the only time it's important. Many people on a magical path tend to pick up energy from others, usually emotional energy. Such people may find themselves picking up another person's emotions, mood, or tension level without knowing it. The same techniques of psychic hygiene can be used to release such pickups as well. Moreover, because we tend to pick up from others in this way, it is important to practice psychic shielding. Psychic shielding basically strengthens your own boundaries so that you do not pick up any energy you do not want. It's good to practice psychic shielding regularly, even daily, as it helps to keep the aura strong.